Well, I'm maybe a day late with my sort of short review on Golden State Furcon. What can I say? I was just too... I was just so very tired yesterday after I came back. Because I originally was supposed to be back early Sunday evening, like about 9 o'clock or so, but I kind of forgot something, so I had to head back to Irvine, and well, you know, I didn't get back till about 12.30, so I just put it off to tonight. This is going to be a new sort of quasi frequent series called Dead Dog Monday where I come back after taking a day off um, after I come, after I go take a day at a furry convention when I finally get off work so uh this is gonna be kind of sort of a balanced uh, review on Golden State Furcon you know I'm gonna talk about the bad and we all know why we're here. I'm going to talk about the uh, drama. And I'm going to talk about the good. So, uh... Without further ado, let's go into the uh, bad of Golden State for a gun. Because apparently bleeding is a good thing. You know, it's kind of a... Uh, I just want to say it's kind of a bad, not a bad, but a pretty uh, odd location for a furry convention in a, ho in a hotel literally across the street from a major airport, you know, because, you know, there were so many other hotels we could have gone out, gone and had the convention at, but we uh, ended up at a at the Hilton, at the Irvine Hilton, literally across the street from John Wayne Airport. And, you know, you could occasionally hear, like, helicopters taking uh, a tour around or the airplanes literally taking off and landing. And I said, oh, boy. But the good part of it was, you know, they have to had to stop at about 11 at night, so you don't really hear planes when you try to go to sleep. At least, you know, especially especially when you're in the room already, I guess they have that really uh, soundproofed, which is kind of good in a way. Although, there was an issue where, you know, there was literally no parking. There are lots of times throughout the weekend where there was no parking, so people were literally parked at the red painted curbs part of the parking lot and I said oh boy that's how many people are here right but you know it was an issue of waiting until you know you could uh, find a spot which took a while but at least there was a parking lot nearby where they just kind of lifted the gate and you know you could park there free if you weren't in the hotel. But, you know, it's like kind of a half a block away in a commercial, uh, in a corporate mall more than anything. You know, that's one of the things. And, uh, uh, one other thing that's kind of a, that what did come up was I'd gone, I ch uh, wanted to check in and they said, yeah, that I would have to wait until I hung around and I met another friend and he checked in and, you know, he got his room right away and that was about two after stuff. That was like an hour after I tried to check in, so I figured, well, if he's checking in, I might as well try again because they said that they would give me a text as soon as the room was available, but I never got the text. I never got the text, so I decided to check, uh, decided to try again to check in and they said, oh, your room is available now. I said, okay, uh. I guess I was supposed to get a text, but nobody gave me a text message or anything. And, you know, there was really no reply for that, so I figured, eh, I'm here already. May as well just go to my room and ch uh, 
get everything back, uh, get everything up in my room so it's not in my car. And that was one thing. Another another thing is the uh, my issue with like the continental breakfast thing, which you know, not so much that it was nine dollars with a coupon, but the fact that there was pretty much. Uh, Let's see, I'm trying to recall what there was. There was uh, cereal. There was a, a small, a small like fruit bar thing, which had watermelon, honeydew, strawberries, blueberries, and I forget the other thing. But I recall they also had bagels, but there wasn't really much in terms of what you could put on the bagels. Oh, and there wasn't bacon and eggs. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me uh, explain. You know, I'm from the Ron Swanson school of give me all the bacon and eggs you got, and apparently that's my thing. Uh, yeah, Tommy Crunchy, I. No, I don't think you missed the talk that much. I'm just barely getting into it. So, uh... Yeah. I'm talking about GSFC right now. I'm just going into the, uh... You know, bad and the good of it. And I'm in the bad right now before I get into the good. Um... Another... Yeah, another thing was the, um... I have this camcorder which I got it like in 2007. It's a big mini DV camcorder. And if you know mini DV, you know, that kind of went out of, uh, kind of fell off the wayside because nobody really wants to have to upload all their video in real time using mini DV or any other kind of cassette tapes anymore, right? So, you know, I said, okay, I'll have something really old and that shoots only in standard definition and nobody really uses anymore because why use standard definition when you have ultra high def, right? 4K? Because I had that camcorder and I had like the 4K camcorder, which, you know, it's obvious that camcorder takes better video than the GL2. But, uh, you know, for some reason, nobody said anything about me having a 4K camcorder. You know, but the moment I pulled out the uh, GL2 and started just messing around with it, one of the con staff said, hey, uh, you're with the media? And I said, no, why do you ask? You know, you know, he pointed out I had a camcorder that was really big. And he said, well, you know, uh, if you're going to be shooting video we, for broadcasts, we just want to make sure you're uh, not going to do anything wrong. And I said, okay, is there anything I need to do? And I, he said, yeah, just follow me to registration so we could get you like a media badge and everything. And... Yeah, so I follow him, and, you know, it wasn't him that was going to clear me. It was going to be someone else, and she had to show up, and she asked uh, to see what my YouTube channel is, and I said, sure, uh, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, I told her what my channel was, and she said, well, I can't seem to find it. I just can't. So I had to actually type it in for her, and if you see my YouTube channel, I don't really post that much video on there. You know, it's kind of sporadic, which I really need to do better on. So, uh, yeah, she sees my channel and she sees, you know, just like a few like first suiting videos and she says, okay, you're, you're good, but we're going to need you to need you to wear this like, uh, press thing on your, uh, badge. And I said, okay, just let me have it. So, uh, yeah, which is kind of a funny thing because I see other people taking video for personal you know, for just for YouTube channels, but you know, it's gotta be me. I'll take it. And you know, let's see. Another kind of sort of thing is that, you know, you could tell people were kind of getting baked. Because of course they do. People, people like to get baked all the time. 
But uh What can I say? For he's like to get baked. Dude, stop repeating that you people like to get baked. Well, you know, what can Well, this is furries. Right now, furry identity is get baked. But yeah, you know, no parking and getting that media badge thing. And it's kind of hot, uh, kind of really warm this weekend. Really, uh, when it's the hottest weekend so far in SoCal. But, uh, I kind of ran out of, I kind of ran out of the drama right now. So if I think of anything else, I'll come back to it later on in the stream. But I kind of want to talk about some of the good things. Uh, let's see. One of the things that, you know, was kind of nice is that they had a memorial for Dog Bomb. You know, where's like a couple of pictures of him and his dogs. And, you know, there was kind of a little handmade statue of Dog Bomb's for Sona enjoying a beer. And there was kind of a middle... Uh, metal bucket with ice in it and a corona which was kind of a nice touch and I saw a few friends this weekend you know I'll, you know I saw a few I saw a few furries that I know from SoCal this weekend and you know they're all people that I get along with which is good and none of the people that I uh, have had any issue with which believe it or not I've had issue with furries too Fortunately, I haven't talked to those people in years, so that's good. But yeah, you know, and uh, it's kind of nice seeing the people that I haven't been able to see at the PS party because I've been too busy to actually be able to go up to Garden Grove the last couple of months. So hopefully I'll be able to see them next month when I go back to the PS party. But for now, you know, this is kind of a good thing. It was kind of fun seeing them again. You know, and some people I haven't seen since ever, uh, since forever. But it was kind of fun, you know. It was kind of fun. I wish I'd gone to more panels, but uh, the only thing I kind of regret not being able to go to was the uh, first Super 8 because I had to actually go back to San Diego and get something and I figured okay you know it'll be a quick two hour trip you know one hour each way but coming back there was so much traffic that I said oh boy I'm gonna miss this aren't I and you know I'm just I kind of wish I'd asked a friend to, uh, asked a friend hey can you take video for me because I'm not gonna be able to make it back and I guess I'll uh, I'll Guess I'll have to uh, find another way to see it. And, uh, let's see. I got a couple of, uh, Pepper Coyote CDs, which is also fun because I bought, I bought a lot of, I bought a lot of his albums earlier, but I, they're kind of stuck in the shed, and I don't know where to f begin looking for them. So I said, okay, I'll buy them again. And I said, you know, and he said, thank you for buying it. And I said, yeah, you know, I kind of bought your CDs before, but I couldn't, I kind of uh, don't know where I put them when I moved. And he says, so you buy my CDs twice. And I said, yeah, Scritchy believes in the furry fandom. You know, and we laughed and laughed and laughed. So, uh. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Ooh, they had foxes. Literal foxes, you know. And I said, oh boy, they're they're bigger than I'd imagined. I figured, boy, look at them. I, I thought they were going to be like 30% smaller, but no, there they were. And the wolf, you know. I said, oh, that's as big as I imagined. Yeah. So. Uh, 
I think, you know, I've had, I'm guessing that the hotel staff may uh, have liked us. You know, from what I gather on Twitter and in maybe the uh, Telegram chats, that some of the hotel staff didn't really like us. But, you know, the front desk, when I checked out, they seem to uh, they seem to be having uh, enjoying themselves, and you know when I took off and I dropped my friend at home, I was kind of almost home when I realized I forgot something at the hotel, so I had to actually call them and say, "Hey, I think I forgot something at the hotel," and they said, "Oh yeah, you know we found it," and uh, I said, "Okay, I'll be right there as soon as I can." And when I go pick it up, I uh, I. Apologies for forgetting, and you know, I and I kind of gave an apology, saying if any of us seems out of line, I'd like to apologize for them. And you know, the girl said, "No, it was cool. We actually had fun with you guys, and we hope to see you again next year." And I said, "Wow, first year con, and it's kind of left a good impression on some of that staff." So, knowing the company that runs this uh, convention, I'm guessing maybe we'll be back at. Maybe that hotel next year, but knowing things, uh, it'll be a uh, one of those game, one of those things where we'll just have to wait and see. And uh, yeah, and another good thing that came up was that uh, another good thing that came up was that. You know, I finally got a friend to be, I got a friend to agree to be in a video that I wanted to produce regarding making a fursuit, and I, uh, I said, hey, can you, do you want to be in a video that I'm making, and he said, sure, you know, and I said, okay, let's go to my room, and I'll have everything set up, and, you know, we talked, and I, Got the video camera set up, and you know we were just shooting, shooting the breeze and everything. And I said, "Isn't this great?" You know, and we talked about the whole making fur suits and performing in fur suits and all that. And you know, it was kind of fun actually, uh, you know, going forward with that because I kept talking about making this video forever, but you know that now that I'm getting getting it started. It was kind of fun actually uh, starting it. So I'm now here, so hoping I'll keep the uh, keep the uh, ball rolling and get more done. Rory thirteen sixty six seventy seven. God is real. Okay. Yeah. Gotta keep, uh, gotta keep the faith, brother. What can we do in the stream? Seems like we can't say anything. Mm, I'm, I'm. That's a good question. Maybe I should, uh, you know, keep uh, working on it. You know, working on it. Maybe pre-plan a little more. And, come up with things I want to talk about and hopefully I'll uh, have uh, this nailed down as I keep uh, making more and more right gotta keep trying but yeah and uh, I'm going back to that uh, the drama the bad the drama the ugly regarding GSFC because making a rocket V2 V2 rocket okay but yeah uh, going back to the ugly regarding GSFC and all the drama are surrounding say, surrounding it saying oh they're just a bunch of Arizona furries that want to take over the SoCal convention scene and I'm here thinking dude we're literal SoCal furries we know what we want in a convention. All we have to do, all we have to do is just, 
you know, get together and get it done. You know, some of us have the time, some of us have the money, some of us have the uh, drive to want to get it done. You know, let's just pull ourselves together and just do it. And then people say, oh, I don't want to do it. Let somebody else do it. And that's the kind of attitude that we need to actually overcome. In order to actually, if we want something, you know, we're going to have to put time and effort and sacrifice in order to get it done. Until then, we, and if, unless we do that, we're not going to get anywhere. Uh, you can never wipe out worries. I, uh, you can never wipe out furries, and if you could, can I join you? I mean, some of them need to be uh, taken uh, taken out back with a rubber hose. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. But hey, you gotta be terrible sometimes in a funny, funny way. Yeah. So, uh, dead air, people. That's what I'm going to do. Dead air. Dead air right now. Because that's all I'm good at is dead air. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. If I had a friend here, he'd say something and I'd give a snark answer like, oh, how about that? How about this last weekend? The stench of a thousand furries has offended my sensibilities. Well, dude, you don't have to be that dark. Well, I don't have to. But, you know, as long as it's in good fun, right? So you're offended by the stench of furries. Well, that and the stench of getting baked. Oh, that's just a rap concert. Well, then, I got nothing, just wanted to say well, then, so, uh, yeah, although, it was kind of nice, just chilling out Sunday. Alright, every time I get dead air, I'm going to say dead air and keep hurting. So, kind of wish I had friends to join the chat with me because then I'd really make this more interesting. Let's see. Interesting because, you know, there's always going to be that furry drama, but somehow... I'm not talking about it that much. Although, you know, it's kind of funny. This con, there was a... From what I heard, there was another furry that was trying to actually set it up. And the people he got together with, they kind of, uh... You know, took it out from... Uh, took it away from him and claimed it as, it own, as their own. Which... Gotta admit, that's kind of a, uh... That's kind of a bull mood, you know? Which, uh... Really, I don't want to take sides on this because, you know, on one side... Oh, you know, they had a right to actually take it away from him. They, they had the money, and then if I choose the other right, oh, other side... Oh, I don't want to go because they, of what they did, then, uh... Then I wouldn't... Probably wouldn't be able to see some of my friends when I went... Sunday. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually recording this, uh, as well as streaming it because I plan to upload it, uh, to my YouTube account later. So, uh, yeah, you'll be able to, uh, so, uh, 
yeah, I'll upload it. Yeah, Grelly, I'll upload this later to my YouTube account. I'll send you the link so that uh, you can hear it. But yeah, it's kind of one of those hard things to uh, that take a stand on where you know it's a bogus move uh, behind the scenes what happens. But if, uh, you know, what, behind the scenes, you know the drama, you... It's kind of hard. Some people make that decision far easier than uh, I would regarding going or not going. Because, you know, on one hand, you know, you know, people that you know and interact with and get along well with got screwed. And on the other hand, you kind of want to go just to see how bad it is. And, you know, I will say this. Regarding the con, I had pretty much better. I pretty much had a bit more fun actually being with friends because some cons like FC or MFF, you know, I had a really great time being on my own because there's so much to do, uh, regardless of who you're with. And then there are other cons, you know, like Antheria or Califer or some of the smaller cons that I went to were. I ha I know who's there, and I know we can all do stuff. To, uh, uh, we can all do stuff together, you know, and actually make our own fun, you know. And that's my whole takeaway from Golden State Furcon is that I had more fun uh, being with actual friends outside of con area more than anything else. Than I did actually being in the con. So uh, that would lead to one of the that would lead to one of those situations where uh, I you would ask me, would you attend GSFC twenty twenty? And every other con that I've been to, I would attend or I would want to attend. Like FC, I would always attend that because I always had fun at FC, or. I want to go to BLFC and MFF again, even though I can't go, I always want to go there. And even Califer, you know, in the last couple of years I went, even if I didn't have fun, I would at least go for a day and say, okay, you know, where are the people that I know, that I can hang out with, that I know what I'm going to do uh, uh, regarding being with them. And even if I'm not going to have fun at the con, at least I'll be with them. At least I went. With Golden State Fur Con, it's kind of like one of those situations where I... This is the first con where I literally don't know if I want to pay for registration. Uh, again, if I'm only going to hang outside of the con space with everyone else. Because I know who I'm going to see there, and I know how to look for things to do outside of uh, con space. Going and officially registering and t trying to take time off work and finding a room and finding uh, a place to park. It's one of those situations where I would really need a good reason to attend again. And not because I didn't have fun, but be rather because I don't know if I could have that much fun again. And it's more an issue of, do I want to attend another SoCal furry convention? That's, that's the, that's the uh, hinge of it, because so many other SoCal furry cons have pretty much n not been as fun for me lately you know and I could probably uh, trace it back to Antheria where I had more fun away from the official con space but it, I feel it kind of started at California 2015 where even back then I just didn't feel like you know it would be worth attending so the answer is I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna go again uh, 
I don't know if I want to go again. Let's put it at that. Because I it all comes down to time off and do I want to take time off to attend again? Mm. I mean, there are other things I could be doing. You know, there are other cons I could be going to. You know, FC. Pa. If I could make it to BLFC, yeah. After that, it's just... I'm pretty much gonna think about it. So I guess that's it. That's a wrap for tonight. Go out, guys, and... uh, Go out, be cool, and have fun. The end.